Hi teacher friends and welcome to level two and three mock class demonstration. This is for A, my friends and I toys. I am so excited that you've made it to this mock class and I am here for you to help you prepare, anticipate, and then I'm here to celebrate with you when you pass your mock class. So today's video is going to be broken down into three parts. The first, what you need and what to expect. Second is a slide-by-slide -slide demonstration with commentary. So as I go through the slides, I will tell you what to expect, give you ideas on how to present the slides, and just help you feel more comfortable um, within each of the slides. And then finally, I'm going to go through the slides in a demonstration without commentary. So I'm just gonna do the slides as I did them back when I took these same mock classes when I got hired with VIP Kid. So I'm so glad you're here with me to go through these. I'm very, very excited. And if you are new to VIP Kid and need a referring teacher, I'm, I'm the girl for you. Um, a referring teacher is someone who helps you through the process and beyond helping you step by step through the process, I will provide you with a reward system and props. These are props I use every day in my classes. So I will send you printables for those and um, I'll be here for you. I'll be your number one cheerleader as you go through the process, become a teacher and then teach. I'll still be there for you when you start teaching um, as your, your biggest fan. So let's dive right into the what you need for these slides. All right, let's get into what you will need. You are gonna need a reward system. You can use the one provided in the slides. That is perfectly fine. I prefer using a 2D reward system. I think it, it just adds another element of fun and the kids like receiving something physical. Um, so, that's how I use the reward system. It's very simple. If you are my referral, I will send you a reward system to get you started. The next thing you will need is a whiteboard and a marker. If you don't have one, you can use a paper and pen. That's that's perfectly fine. But when you become a VIP Kid teacher, a whiteboard and marker are going to be some of your best friends for most all of your classes. So I recommend getting a set. The next thing you'll need is props. And the prop I recommend you have is a ball. You can use your dog's ball if you want. It doesn't have to be complicated. Oh, it's kind of squishy. <laughs> um, and then another prop I use is this um, kite that I drew when I took the same mock. I drew this little kite and I use him quite often in my classes. You don't have to have a kite, but I recommend that you use um, some sort of ball. And the next thing you'll need is a timer because you have 10 minutes to get through all of these slides. And if you can set up a timer and keep your eye on it, it'll keep you um, rolling, keep you from getting stuck on one slide for too long. It'll remind you to keep moving forward, to keep moving forward. Besides your computer with the camera, you're gonna need a headset that has a mic built into it. This mic really helps the students and the mock mentor hear you. Um, and it makes a huge difference in your classes. Let's talk about the mentors who do your mock class. Every mentor I've come across with VIP Kid has been so helpful, so kind. So don't be afraid of this, this mysterious person. They are here to help you get started on your VIP Kid journey. Yes, they are watching to see how you teach the class and to give you pointers and to guide you along the way, but they are so, so helpful. Some very genuine, helpful people. And they are going to be in character as a five-year-old once you start your mock. This really takes the, the nerves and the edge off it because they, they, really, they seem like a five-year-old. They're going to make mistakes. They're going to pretend they have a limited vocabulary. Um, and this will give you a better feel for how the classes will actually go. So it's very, very helpful. And the last thing that you want to use is TPR when you teach. And TPR is your hand motions. You're gonna want um, to use lots of hand motions to help communicate what you are saying because it really makes a difference if you absolutely do nothing with your hands or if you're you know, greeting with your hand and showing things with your hands. Um, it really is really helpful. So before we jump into the slides, I want to tell you that this demonstration I'm giving is just a base. Use it as a base for how you give the mock, but build on it your own teaching style. This is how I teach. This is what's manageable manageable and doable for me. So take this structure as a base and build on it you, your unique teaching style and what is manageable and doable and enjoyable for you. If something I do feels awkward, don't do it. Do what feels comfortable for you and do what makes you the best teacher. All right, let's get into these slides. On the top right corner of each slide, you'll notice a little letter, I, P, A, or E. Introduce, practice, apply, extend. And these are not to make things complicated or overwhelm you. They are very, very helpful to know where you are in the teaching process. So that I stands for introduce, and it is where I do. 
this concept or word is new to the student, so I'm introducing it to them and having them repeat it. The next thing is P for practice, and here we're practicing it with the student. It's the we do part, and I'm beginning to release the student towards independence, toward being able to do the action or say the word themselves. The A is for apply, and this is the you do part. Here we want to see if the child is able to say the word or use the concept on their own, and if they can't, it's okay, because we are teachers. We're here to meet them where they need us. We're not asking them to come to our level. We're coming to their level to help them. We're teaching them. So if they are unable to apply that word or concept, it's okay. Help them out, meet them where they need it, and model for them and then have them do it on their own. The E is for extend and here we're building upon what they have learned and we're pushing them toward more independence. So they've learned a word or concept and we get to this E part, we're gonna see if we can build on it. Maybe add in um, a color with it. If they've learned the word ball, see maybe they can learn the word blue. We're just adding adding to um, their knowledge, pushing them towards independence so they can become better English speakers. Slide one is our greeting slide. So here we're gonna learn the student's name and tell them our name, like this. Hi, my name is Teacher Rebecca. What's your name? When we want the child to speak, we cup our ear and wait for them to speak. <laughs> my name is Vicky. Hi, Vicky, how are you? Happy. Happy, great. I am happy too. Vicky, how old are you? Five. Five? Wow! That's great, great, Vicky. So keep it simple. Welcome them. Make it warm. You're building a rapport here, getting to know them a little bit, but you have to keep moving. Don't spend too much time on this slide because you only have 10 minutes for all the slides. So keep rolling. So before we click over to slide two, we're going to ask the student, are you ready to go? And then we, we want them to say with us, let's go. If they can't say it, that's fine. You just keep moving and they will follow. Let's go. Slide two, this is the reward system slide. So we wanna share with the student that when they do a good job, they will get a reward. Vicki, when you do a good job, you get candy. Mmm, good job, Vicki. Now, if you don't want to do the 2D reward, just go ahead and introduce the, the toys as their reward. So I'm doing the 2D reward, but I still need to teach them how to drag and drop on the slide. So, Vicky, drag and drop toys. So I am going to move one of the items to the cart to demonstrate to them because they don't know what they're doing. And they will begin to catch on and they can move the toys to the cart. Now, if you're going to use this as a reward system, I'll move a few of those toys and then keep going. But if you're not using this as a reward system, you can move all the toys. It's up to you. Drag and drop. Good job, Vicky. All right, slide three. Notice the little I in the right corner. This is introduce. We're introducing a new verb to them, a new vocabulary word to them. And this one is ball. Ball. And then you can circle the picture of a ball. Anytime we mark the screen with circling or underlining, we're drawing literally and figuratively, their attention to the picture. Circle, ball, ball, ball. We always wanna say new words at least twice, have them repeat it, because we're introducing it. She plays with a ball. So here, we can use our handy dandy props. She plays with a ball. She plays with ball. If they mess up, and the mentors will, because they're looking to see how you will correct the child. Just correct the child and keep moving. Always keep it positive. She plays with a ball. Good job, Vicki. All right, and then when you've gotten the child to repeat the word, repeat the sentence, underline, just have fun, keep it light, keep it encouraging. Then keep going, hop on to that next slide. Slide four, we're going to begin to practice with the student. You see the P in the right hand corner. So let's practice with them um, like this. What does he play with? So we're asking them and seeing if they can remember and 
plug in any of the things they learned on the last slide. And if they can't, it's okay. We're meeting them where they need us. So what does he play with? He plays with a ball. We want them to be able to repeat that. He plays with a ball. Then we can switch it up with the she. What does she play with? She plays with a ball. So we're going to want to underline or circle whatever we want the student to be saying back to us. So then they see it as well as hear it. So we're reinforcing the different kinds of learning and it's better for different kinds of learners because you never know what type of learner this student is. So we want them to say she plays with a ball and he plays with a ball. So I'll put my finger under my mouth when I am speaking and cup it behind my ear when it's something I want them to say back. So if I want them to repeat something, she plays with a ball, I point under my mouth so they know that this is something I'm going to want them to repeat and then cup it behind my ear when I want them to say it. She plays with a ball. What does she play with? She plays with a ball. All right, and then once they've said those sentences, she plays with the ball, he plays with the ball, we're just gonna keep moving. We can reward this, the student here. <gasps> Great job, Vicky, you get candy. And then just keep moving along. Slide five is the apply slide. So you see the little A, apply. And here we're gonna see if the student can offer the information. So we could ask, what does he play with? We want them to say, ball, and then we encourage them to say the full sentence if they don't say the full sentence. He plays with a ball. He plays with ball. He plays with a ball. He plays with a ball. See, we want them to say the full sentence correctly, and if they can't, we encourage them and, and then say it again to get them to repeat it, because we want them to be able to say it correctly, the full sentence. And now there's also the picture of the kite, and the kite is probably a new word they have not learned yet. So we want to introduce that word to them, kite. What does he play with? We'll see if the student can connect the two sentences from ball to kite. Kite. He plays with a kite. He plays with a kite. Great job, Vicky. Very good. So there you have it. We've um, introduced, practiced, and applied the vocabulary word ball, and we've even thrown in a new word kite. So you're doing great. If you're feeling like this is overwhelming, don't because keep going through it. When you start practicing it, it'll really come together and I know you can do a great job. So don't be overwhelmed. Remember this is a demonstration to show you how it goes and then you can apply this very simply because the IP kid gives you these little clues, the I, P, E, A, to make it easier for you, to help you as a teacher. They're on your side. They're wanting you to pass this too. They're here to help you. So hang in there. You're doing great. Slide six, we're jumping into that verb. So we're repeating the back to I all over again. So we're introducing the verb throw. Throw, throw. Then we wanna put it in sentences to help the student expand their knowledge. She throws. I wanna emphasize that S, she throws. They throw. They throw. And here's where our handy dandy word comes in handy. We can show them here. I throw. And then we can put that they back in. They throw. And then when we get down here to the he and she, we want to emphasize the S. She throws. She throws. So we're helping the student differentiate the verb, how we change the verb. All right, now slide seven, we are practicing it with the student. So here we have he throws. So let's just put the little he up here. He throws. He throws. And then the next picture is for kick, and they probably haven't learned the word kick yet. So here we want to demonstrate that too. Kick. He kicks. Good job, Vicky. You get candy. Now you need to give at least three rewards throughout the lesson. I'm a big rewards person, so I'll probably be closer to five, but you want to give at least three for such a short 
um, lesson with these 10 slides. All right, now let's hop over to the A, to the apply. And here's where that drag and drop comes in. So they haven't done that since the reward, the reward slide. So here we're gonna, we might have to show them how to drag and drop, but we're wanting them to see, we want to see if they can apply the verb. Vicky, drag and drop. She, she throw, she throws. We want to see if they're able to do it. And if they can't, that's okay. We want to help them out. But first, we want to give them the opportunity to do it on their own. She throws. Good job, Vicky. I, I throw. Yes, good job. You did it, Vicky. Good job. So here, we want to celebrate with them. They've learned a verb and they've applied it. And so have fun with this. It doesn't have to be rigid or stiff. Have fun, celebrate with the student when they do well. Encourage them with positive reinforcement when they do poorly, because we want to help them and encourage them, cheer them on. They're very young and English is daunting and new to them. So meet them where they need you and encourage them and then keep moving forward because our timer is ticking. With slide nine, we're getting into the phonics of the lesson. So here we're gonna introduce the sound ip to the student. Ip. Ip. Very good, Vicky. Zip. Zip. And then we can continue to draw. You can use different kinds of props if you'd like. I just really like keeping it simple and writing hip, rip sip and having the student repeat them and practice those with me. So I like to keep this simple. And then um, next is slide 10. So here's an extend slide. You'll see that E for extend. Now you might be running out of time at this point. And if you are, do not stress. The mentor wants to see that you have met all the objectives on the slides more than they care about you finishing them all at a perfect 10 minutes. So if you run out of time, don't sweat it. You can just go ahead to the goodbye slide. If you still have a minute, go ahead and extend this. And you can do it by focusing on a color on the page, having them repeat a sentence. Who plays with a ball? A blue, that kind of thing. Just extend it as you feel comfortable with the student at the student's level. If this was all really easy for the student, well, teach them something new. Um, teach them more colors on the slide. Um, and if it was hard for the student, just reinforce those words, those sentences, and then reward them again. Good job! and then hop on over to that goodbye slide. And when you want to say goodbye, you want to encourage the student that they have done well, reward them one final time, and then say bye. And if the mentor stops you before you're, you're finished, it's okay, that doesn't mean you failed, it just means you're out of time. And like I said, they're looking to see that you've met the objectives more than they're looking to see that you finished right on the dot. So the goodbye slide, good job, Vicky. high five. You get, Rainbow candy, mmm, rainbow. Very good, Vicky. Vicky, you did a good job today. I will see you next time. Bye. So then we've said goodbye, and you finished. Whew, you finished that mock. So after the mock. The mentor will give you some pointers on things you can improve on and they'll also encourage you. Now, soak in that encouragement, and but do pay attention to the pointers they have for you to do better because if you have to retake this, you'll know what you need to work on. And if you don't need to retake it and you're done, you still could use the pointers to help you in your class because the ultimate goal is for you to do well in class. The ultimate goal isn't just for you to pass this, it's for you to be a great VIP kid teacher. And the mentor has your best interests at heart and they want to encourage you and they also want to encourage you by helping you become a better teacher. So after the mock, you'll receive an email a few hours later with notes from the mentor and it will either congratulate you for passing or invite you to take it again. And if you have to take it um, again, don't grow discouraged. Take what they have taught you through your demonstration and apply it to the next time around to do even better because even if you have to take it again, at the end of taking it again, you will be a better teacher for it. You will have learned new tricks and new, new skills and you'll do all the better. 
Now for the final part of our mock demonstration, I am going to go through all the slides without commentary. I'm just going to demonstrate the slides just as I would do them for the student. So you can sit back and relax, get yourself a little comfy, and um, we will dive right in and get a feel for it, take in tips, take down notes if you want. Just get ideas to get a feel for how the whole mock goes within those 10 minutes. So I've got my timer here and I'm going to be watching the time because it's, it's hard to stay on track. It's hard to know if you're going too fast or too slow. If you're not, just having a clock there to glance at. One minute per slide's our goal. And so here we go. Hi, my name is Teacher Rebecca. What is your name? My name is Vicki. Vicky, hi! How are you? Happy! Happy! Good! Vicky, I am happy too! Good! Vicky, how old are you? Five! Five years old! Wow! That's good, Vicky! Are you ready to get started? Let's go! Vicky, when you do a good job, you get candy. Mmm. Mmm. Candy. One candy. Yay! Vicky, drag and drop. Drag and drop. Toys, drag, drop. Yes, good. Very good, Vicky. That's right, drag and drop. Ball. Ball. Yes. She plays with a ball. She plays with a ball. She plays with a ball. That's right. Good job, Vicky. Ball. Yes. Ball. Very good. Good job. What does he play with? Ball, yes! He plays with a ball. He plays with a ball. That's right! Very good! What does he play with? He plays with a ball. Very good, Vicky. You get mm, candy! Good, Vicky! Good job! One, two! Two candies! Yay! Hmm. What does... What does he play with? He plays with ball. Good! He plays with a ball. He plays with a ball. That's right! Now, shh! He What does he play with? <laughs> he plays with a ball. Yes, he plays with a ball. He plays with a ball. That's right, Vicky. Good job. High five. Hmm. Kite. Kite. <laughs> Kite. Very good, Vicky. What does he play with? He plays with a ball. Ball? Ball. Kite. He plays with a kite. He plays with a kite. That's right. 
High five. Good job, Vicky. He plays with a kite. He plays with a kite. That's good. Very good. Mm, throw. Throw. That's right. Throw. Good. I throw. Mm, she? She throws. Yes, throws. Good. She throws. Mm -hmm. I throw. Yes. She throws. Good. He throws. That's right. He throws. Very good, Vicky. High five. Very good. They? They throw. Yes, they throw. Very good, Vicky. Hmm. Kick, kick. I kick. Good. He kicks. Yes, he kicks. Very good, Vicky. Great job. Vicky, drag and drop. What does she throw? She throws a ball. Yes, she throws a ball. She throws a ball. Very good, Vicky. Hmm. I I throw a ball. High five. Great job, Vicky. I have candy. Mmm, purple. Purple. Purple candy for you. Mmm, mmm, mmm. One, two, three. Three candies. Good job, Vicky. Mmm, ip, ip. 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 Very good. Good, Vicky. Zip. Zip. Hip. Hip. Rip. Rip. Sip. Sip. Zip. Good. Hip. Hip. Rip. Rip. Very good. S sip. Zip. Very good, Vicky. That's right. Great job. Uh oh. <laughs> her dad's got her. <laughs> Zip. Zip. Ip. Hip. R ip, rip, s ip, sip. Very good, Vicky. Hip. <laughs> Great job, Vicky. Very good. Vicky, who throws? Who throws? Yes, yes, she throws. Ball? She throws a ball. She throws a ball. She throws a ball. Very good. She throws a ball. Great job. High five, Vicky. Very good. I have yellow candy. Yellow. Good. Yellow candy. One, two, Three, four candies. Great job, Vicky. Vicky, hmm. What color is this shirt? 
Orange. Yes! Orange. Orange. Very good, Vicky. Vicky, you did such a good job today. High five. Good. I have one more candy. Rainbow. Rainbow. Good job, Vicky. One, two, three, four, five candies. Very good. Vicky, I will see you next time. Bye. And there you have it. <laughs> we stayed under 10 minutes. We got through all of the slides and met all of the objectives. And whew, we're done. So I know you can do this. I'm excited for you. I'm rooting for you. I'm cheering for you. And let me know when you finish your mock. Let me know if you have any questions. Leave a comment below because I'm here for you. And I want to help you as much as I can and celebrate with you when you are done and ready to move on to the next part of the teaching process. So give this video a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe so you don't miss my other videos all about helping you become a better ESL online teacher. I'll see you next time, my friends.